hello everyone welcome back to the channel today we're going to be rendering every day for a week so let's get into the video so for day one of the challenge i wanted to do something that was relatively easy because i don't know about you challenges tend to be daunting and i knew if i didn't start with something that was kind of child's play i probably would have never finished this challenge in the first place so i had pre-picked all of my references like from day one i knew what day seven was going to be and i think that's a really big tip that anyone could possibly use because it makes the whole process seem a bit less intimidating i started off with a really simple sketch and i used contrasting colors because that's another thing that i was working on with this challenge were my colors and in doing that, I think it really helped this image pop. And for day one, I honestly think it looks pretty good. I ended up just making him a cute little Gudetama thingy. So for day two of the challenge, I ended up using the same brush that I used for day one because I really liked the texture that it gave me. And that was honestly a plus for me because I was going to make it a bit smoother, but I immediately thought, no, I have to work on my textures. I also want to work on my colors, so let me just use the same chisel brush. This honestly was one of my favorites, but I do wish I would have went a more stylized route. I think it's very more vibrant and I think it pops a lot, but looking back on it, it was just a bit too like photocopy-esque and I honestly don't like when art looks like that. I like a more stylized approach, so that is definitely something I would change next time. Day three is when I really started to get into the bread and butter of the challenge and really started to face why I started this challenge in the first place and that was just rendering skin and faces. One of my favorite things to do is render people but I hated the fact that it was just always so flat. Every time I would render a person it just never really looked that good in my opinion or maybe I just outgrew the way I would render things before. But with challenge one and two, I was like, you know what, let me push the envelope a bit. Let me work on my textures, let me work on my rendering. I've done it before, let me try to do it again. So originally this was just a bald guy that I found on Pinterest, but then I was like, you know what? It kind of looks like Gato, so let me just make it him. I thought that would be visually interesting. When it came to rendering the face, I just blocked out the light colors. I put down a mid-tone first, and then I kind of just built on top of that. And I had three main colors, mid-tone, highlights, and then shadows. Oh, I love how this turned out. I definitely need to work on my skin tones and just my color, my color, not my coloring, but the color, because this ended up looking very flat. And I ended up having to just put filters on top of it. Now granted, the rendering itself I thought was great. I think the skin looked amazing. I was looking at a bunch of reference photos and I don't have any issues with that. It's just the fact that this man literally looks half dead without the filters. Like it's so gray and it just looks bad. But honestly, I'm excited because then it gives me something to work on in the future. And even though I talk crap about it, I really, really do love how this turned out. Now, this painting was a bit of a doozy, mainly because I used a technique that I've never done before, but because of the way the last one turned out and the whole process of that one, I wanted to really work on my values and really push the envelope when it came to how my coloring turned out. So in order to do that, I tried a grayscale to color rendering style, and a lot of my favorite artists use this rendering style, but with a program like Ibis Paint, I was pretty limited in what I was able to do. After a few tutorials, maybe like 10, I kind of figured it out, and I really do think that the grayscale to color method is good for people who struggle with values like myself. And I 100% recommend trying a new technique when you're jumping into a challenge. Because if it goes wrong, then you could just leave it at the challenge. 
Now, <laughs> I thought the last one bet was bad, and even though I'm laughing, it's really not funny because this was probably the, <laughs> the craziest thing I've ever drawn. So I initially was like, I'm gonna render this fuzzy hat, and the fuzzy hat looked good. And because my last skin rendering was so good, I was like, I'm gonna do this again. But this time we're not gonna do grayscale because I understand color and shadows. So I went into this super confident. I started off with blocking out the mouth and putting the colors there because I just like to feel like I got something done. And then I jumped right into the highlights. And at a point it was promising. And then that was very short lived. So looking back on this, I should have gone with a plan. And honestly, when you're doing a challenge like this, plan things out. It's very important or you'll end up like me, coloring a literal boiled chicken. But like I was saying before, the highlights made it look promising. I thought I was gonna go in here, two simple colors, base color, highlight color, you know, just draw what I see. But I, it just went downhill so fast because I had the same problem that I had with the Gato image before where it was just extremely flat and monotone. Like it's just so flat and so monotone that I just hated it so much. And I just want to bury this and leave it in the past because it's like everything that I thought I learned prior just went out of the window. And that's what's so funny about these challenges. You're like on top of the world and then the next it all just comes crashing down. At this point in the challenge, I think I was a bit discouraged, but this one helped me a lot. I did it super quick, I worked on my textures, I did the same brush as I did prior, and I just drew a convenience store bag, or actually a Chinese food store bag. I liked the contrasting colors and I loved the textures, and all in all, this ended up being one of my favorites. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, buckle your seatbelts because this very day was the reason why I did the challenge in the first place. For day seven, I chose to draw Brie Matthews. And honestly, I think I ate. So this was an old sketch that I did and I revamped it so we can have a more powerful expression because I've been working on those lately. So I obviously had to do a little call back to my old art and improve. Once I had did the sketch, I just laid down base colors and was able to like really set a plan for my skin tone. And I just have the three colors again, like I did with the Gato drawing. And I actually this time had a source of light cause that was a struggle I had before. So once I got the base to a good place that I wanted it to be at, I then started to work on the hair. If you can see in the corner, I'm actually referencing some of my own art. Um, that's the YouTube video that I referenced, shameless plug. But in doing that, it actually helped me be super successful with the hair and I really loved how it turned out. I actually found myself getting stuck and forgetting how to render hair, but then I was like, wait a minute, I made a whole YouTube video on it. So why not just go back and reference it? And I honestly think you should do that more. I don't know why, but sometimes I just forget that I can use my own art as reference. Like that's a thing. Even if I'm not the greatest artist yet, there are times where you like go super saiyan and you do things that's actually amazing. So tip is to just go back and reference your old art. Now I can't take all the credit for this color palette. I'm not at that point yet. I actually referenced this book cover. Now I don't wanna take anything away from myself. I obviously worked very hard, but referencing other artists helped me a lot and has been helping me a lot on my artistic journey. So I definitely recommend that you do that as well. This was definitely my favorite day, but if I had to look back on the entire week, Honestly, the growth is amazing and it makes me want to do a challenge like this again, but next time I would definitely keep a theme because though this was good, I think I would be able to see my growth better with an overarching theme. But all in all, this was really amazing and I definitely recommend you guys try a challenge like this in the future.
thank you all for tuning into this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any suggestions down below or any other tips for artists down below, just put them in the comments and I'll be very appreciated. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.